Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested here, and there's a familiar face to longtime Tested viewers. This is Sean Frain, CEO of Looking Glass Factory. Sean, so good to see you in person. Yeah, it's uh, quite a treat. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's been a couple years since we've had you in our studio. Right. Since then, you guys launched and have shipped the Looking Glass Portrait. It's one of my favorite pieces of technology Thank last you. year. Uh, that's this display right here. And today we're taking a look at some of the larger versions of Looking Glass. But first of all, for folks who maybe their first time seeing this product, uh, tell us about this idea of Looking Glass and the technology you guys have developed to create, as we can see, three-dimensional images in this volume. Yeah, well, I hope a lot of folks can see these in person soon, because it's always hard to convey this over 2D media, um, but the looking glass is a holographic display. The more technical term for it would be a light field display, and um, it's different from any two-dimensional display you've ever seen in that we control the directionality of light. So normally a display will shine, like the pixels of a LCD panel will shine with two properties of intensity and color but we add a third property of directionality to, in the case of our largest system, 100 million points of light to recreate the field of light that makes the real world feel real. Um, and therefore, what you look at through the looking glass is as real as reality. So without having to wear 3D glasses, you can see a three-dimensional image because uh, all at once at a, you know, a video frame rate, you are displaying multiple views. That's right. How you, uh, uh, I have seen the software. So what the input is, is like a, a grid instead of just one image. It's this image of all possible angles in your field of view seen at once. So whether my head is here or over there, we're still seeing a different perspective of this image. Yeah, exactly. And we sort of nerdily call that format a quilt because uh, <laughs> it's a quilt of the yeah, different yeah, perspectives right. um, that you would see. And what's going on in the software that we've built in the background is basically we're taking all this different 3D stuff, whether it's something that someone might have designed in a 3D program like Blender or an engine like Unity or a portrait mode photo that has depth information that someone shot. And we um, sort of transcode that or convert it into this intermediate holographic format like the quilt is one example. And then that outputs through the displays. And, and that can be something that's baked in. So a video file that's playing dozens of these images all at once or something generated in, in real time. That's right. So um, our entire technology stack of both the hardware and the software is a real time stack, meaning you can show static uh, holographic photos and images. You can show recorded video that's playing it up to 60 frames per second, but you can also have interactive applications too. So I want to talk about the hardware because that's sure. new hardware that I've never seen before here that you guys uh, announced last year that you're working on. I've always asked you guys about scaling, right? The, mm -hmm. the various different displays you've made in the past, like how big can this get? Yeah. Uh, and usually and, takes people 10 seconds <laughs> to ask. <yeah. laughs> right, exactly. So this is the, the portrait is of this fixed size, this fixed resolution. You have a 4K display here, an 8K display here. Is it just a matter of getting better processing and and finding display panels as well as the way you're optically affecting it and just scaling it up? Yeah, I mean, the, the core technological ideas of the portrait are bigger in the other systems. There are challenges once you start to hit 8K video. So um, we're generating 8K holographic quilts on the fly, mm -hmm. basically, for interactive applications and in all of our plugins and to Unity and Unreal and Blender and so on. Um, so. There are definitely challenges on the software side when going from a like two and a half K type of resolution up to an 8K resolution. Um, but in terms of the core physics principles, they're the same throughout the entire lineup. And you're getting effectively a similar field of view or you're targeting a similar field of view as well as uh, the, the resolution and the clarity of the image? Yeah, that's right. You can get more folks around like our largest system, the 8K Gen 2, uh, the Looking Glass 8K Gen 2, just because it's bigger. Um, but in terms of the field of view, they're all between 50 to 60 degrees. Mm. Well, from a user experience standpoint, I, when I look at the portrait, I have one on my desk, I turn my you know, portrait photos, and even some of the, you can kind of uh, hack uh, the cinema mode. I on, saw that. On You're an excellent hologram hacker, actually. <laughs> and it's, it's really cool to think of this as you know, like a 
a phone or a tablet size display and having those images, even looking at these displays, the larger ones in person, having things that are more one-to-one -one size right. changes kind of the way I think of how I want to interact or just absorb that. And, and what have you found is the benefit of just not, ha not just having a bigger thing that you can have more people around, right. but having the actual objects themselves be more one-to-one -one size? Yeah, I mean, for any situation where you really want to have a group of people around, I mean, these are my kiddos, actually. I took a um, light field photo up. So when you want to show something to a group of people, um, and for these larger systems, now it's more professional audiences, um, but eventually these will go to a wider and wider uh, group of folks. Um, you just need something that's larger format. You don't, you know, typically gather around a phone to watch a movie mm -hmm. um, in 2D. And similarly, you wouldn't want to experience some holographic content on only the portrait. That's great for a lot of things, but it's not suitable for like a trade show or an experiential marketing experience or a video call, like an experimental like holographic video call. I like see a render of a face right there. James and Bond. that is, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's actually larger than than one to one. Right. But when you can have a real time, you know, light field style video call with uh, Azure Connect or something right. that's capturing it, um, Theoretically, that's that's a different type of communication experience than you would holding a phone up or looking totally. at a smaller display. Yeah. You're connecting with the content differently. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, every time we make something larger, people are like, how much larger can it sure. go? Yeah. And there's no physical limit to this technology because we're controlling the the field of light, the directionality of a bunch of points of light, and that can physically scale to any size. So we're not scattering light off of physical medium or off of a gas or things like that. So um, we're really excited to see what um, a lot of folks do with the holographic applications that they've already been making in these larger format systems. One of the things you did when you launched the, the portrait was release a suite of applications right. for importing you know, OBJ files or yeah. converting a portrait mode photo from a, a, an iPhone. And you guys have iterated on that on, on the software side, but people are doing some pretty amazing things. You know, I, I drop one in on your Discord from yeah. time to time, and there are a lot of video game developers, for oh, example, yeah. or people are interested in things like photogrammetry. You know, what are the, some of the surprising pieces of holographic content that people are making? Well, I mean, um, I, there's so much. Uh, Somebody in the community, and any, everyone should hop into our Discord if you're curious to see where there's this bubbling up of amazing creativity in hologram land. Um, and I think it's, if you go to look.glass slash Discord, um, folks can uh, join the community there. Um, somebody made a way to pull um, uh, any screenshot from like 500 different video games into their looking glass. So they're taking holographic screenshots from 500 different video games like Halo, Counter-Strike, and whatnot. Um, other folks have found ways to um, take regu regular 2D photos and through different AI algos be able to um, create the multitude of views that then mm -hmm. can run in the looking glass. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on. And input-wise, you want this to not just be a passive experience. That's right. right. So can, can we see yeah. some of the demos you have created for some, some interactivity? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to use the um, Leap Motion Controller. But you know, we're kind of any peripheral that's out there in XR land, we love to use. And so this is just one example. And so here's a jet engine that we were um, preparing for a product um, demo in my hands is being tracked by this sleep motion controller and a little 3D representation is made in the display. Um, and I can kind of like Tony Stark style, explode view it, x-ray it. Um, and actually, maybe one thing I should point out is that um, the displays are hollow. So mm -hmm. the holograms are kind of like existing in this space in the real world. Uh, well, even that representation of your hand there is close to one to one. Yeah, which speaks to just—it's it's a more intuitive or natural way for you to interact with something without having to directly touch it, because you're not doing a scaling in your head, you know, That's manipulating right. like a, a small pinch to touch thing. That is as if your hand was interacting with it. Yeah, this can get to—I mean, you're hitting it—you know, right on the head that we can do a lot that's one to one at this scale, and that is 
a profound difference from anything that's been available that we've made or anyone has made, to my knowledge, um, before for this sort of group viewing holographic experience. Yeah. So obviously you're iterating on hardware, finding like the limits of how far you could push mm -hmm. the size uh, based on the panels and the optical and the manufacturing that you have. Right. Um, what's next on on the software side? Where what what do you? I mean, obviously you have to shipping and delivering these things, but you know what are you guys? How are you guys thinking about going forward? Yeah, I mean our um, our goal is to turn more and more three D stuff in this wide complex world of different 3D formats, um, different ways to generate 3D content into a holographic media format like the quilt um, set that can run in these systems. And so we're putting in a lot of work on that over um, the coming months. So have some exciting stuff in the future. Yeah. Both the real-time stuff and the stuff that can the plugins, like you say, you know, whether yeah. it's um, video game engine, graphics engines, or you know, people have ported uh, Doom in, in, That's, so in yeah, real time, right? Exactly. So play that. And that's because the source code's open, and they're just—it's computer systems today are powerful enough to generate, you know, the, the multiple views all at the same time. Yep, absolutely. That creator, Jan Kaiser, that made the um, the Doom um, integration basically into the Looking Glass, has made so many amazing plugins for the community just out of passion. Um, and I don't know—that's an exciting place um, that we've always wanted to be at. And we're glad we survived long enough to get here. <laughs> You're reaching that hub where you get a lot. The community is, is feeding the right. content. You don't have to have. You don't have to generate all the renders and all the examples. And it's not just your kids anymore. It's it's it's, it's a huge community. Yeah, that's right. And you know, because you've followed the arc of this from back in Maker Fair days. Yeah. Um, if anyone actually remembers what Maker Fair is anymore, um, of that being what we had hoped would happen at some point, and so that that's really happening now. Awesome. Well, so good to see you, Sean. Thank you so much yeah, likewise. for bringing these here to the city. And I'm going to get some hands-on time and check these out. Cool. Thanks, Norm.